Hi there, Susan McGarry here, and I got a request to show how I use my wet saw to cut fused glass pieces. So, the first thing we need to do is get suited up. So here we go! Alright, let's start at the top. I cover my hair to keep glass out of my hair, and I cover my eyes to keep glass out of my eyes, and I cover my mouth to keep glass out of my lungs, and I cover my ears to protect my hearing, and I wear that drywall painting suit to keep me dry while I'm cutting. And the rubber gloves just protect my hands a little bit. And I have the iPod there so I can listen to some music while I'm cutting. That's a picture of the drywall suit that I'm wearing. And this is how I package my iPod in a little Ziploc bag with the headphones sticking out of it there. And I just use a tiny clamp to clamp it on my drywall suit. And my drywall suit comes with a little hat, little hood there, so I can cover up just a little bit more. If I can find the zipper there, I'll zip it up a little bit. There we go. And now I am ready to go, ready to start cutting. Okay, here we are at my saw, and the saw that I use is a QEP. It's very inexpensive and it works great. This is about a year old. It's a workhorse lasts forever. One of the great advantages is the saw blade is held from underneath. There is no arm on top. My old saw used to be a an MK, very powerful saw, wonderful, very loud, but um, the biggest problem was the blade was held from on top, and so I was very limited with what I could cut with it. For a saw like this, the blade is held from underneath. The nut is underneath, the motor is underneath, so your blade is completely free up here. So if you wanted to cut something like a wine bottle that's pretty thick, your, the glass isn't thick, but the height of it is, you can go right over the blade without having that arm in the way. And if you have one of those saws that grabs from on top, you know exactly what I mean. So I prefer having it from underneath. It also has a water reservoir under it, but I prefer to bring in cold, fresh water. I put a five-gallon bucket of water uh, with a garden pump in it and, and pump the water up to this lock Y kit. And I never really found a connection that worked for it, so I duct taped it together. It works great. And I hold it pretty much where I want it with a clamp clamping the lock Y kit onto the blade guard. Okay, the next thing about this saw is it comes with a, gar a guide. You can move the guide up here right where you want it. It's got a nice measuring tape down here. And always cut the same width piece of glass. But I don't always cut the same width piece of glass. And I don't want to constantly be moving this. So I will generally take this off or at least move it to the side. And I put down a piece of duct tape. I usually use black duct tape, but I used this bright orange today so you could see it. And what I did was put it just about an inch away from the side of the blade. So my pieces will be about an inch wide if I follow that guide right there. But also, once I do that, I know that's an inch. If I want to then cut three quarters of an inch or an inch and a half, I know that's about an inch. That's why I use that. The type, I, type of blade I use, I don't use the blade that came with the saw. Those are um, the worst blades. They're just supposed to get you started. Um, you can upgrade to a, a glass and tile blade for about $40. Um, I prefer to go for this one. It's about $150, $160. And it comes with a dressing stick. So I wanted to step away from the wet saw for just a second to show you the difference between the blade that I prefer and a standard wet saw blade. Uh, this is the one that came with the wet saw and you can see it's been used a couple of times but really it doesn't last very long. And this is the one that I prefer and the one that I prefer is much thinner and you can see that when I stand it up on end. And so I get better cuts, less chipping, and not to mention that this one lasts much longer. So now let's go back to the wet saw.
This is called a dressing stick and it's for sintered blades. And this is a sintered blade where the diamonds are embedded into the metal and as they get sort of gummed up, you run this in there to clean out those diamonds. Just once, just run it in there and, and bring it out and it's sharp again. And my blade will last me for hundreds or thousands of cuts. So to me this is a better deal because I do so much cutting. One more thing I add is a piece of plexiglass. It's just rough cut, very poorly cut. It doesn't have to be fancy or special. I just set it here to keep excess water from hitting me, but for today, and wrap my arms around it to cut. But for today, I won't use that so that you can see a little better of how I'm cutting this glass. Okay, enough talking. Let me show you how I saw. So it's going to get a little noisy, so I will lower the volume for you. Now I'll turn on the water. I'm going to aim it towards the blade so it keeps the blade cool. So with this little guide here, I was able to cut a one inch wide piece. I was able to take that and cut about a three quarter inch wide piece. So now there's, that's a nice jewelry piece. And for this, I did about a half an inch. So that guide just lets me know about where I'm at. And then I sort of freehand it. These two little pieces I decided to make into um, sort of triangles. And I made sure to keep a flat top on it so when I glue my bale I have somewhere to put the bale. That might not sound important now but it will when you go to glue the bale. Okay the next thing I'm going to do is cut the bottom off this bottle. I've got my water source going. I have my guard set in place, locked in place so I can just set my bottle up against this guard and rotate the bottle and let the blade do the work. I've lowered the guard just a little bit so I don't get quite as much water at me. So here we go.
All right, there's our bottle. It's got just a little bit of sharp right here and right here. I'm going to turn on the saw and sort of sand that down with the blade. There you go. It shouldn't be sharp at all because it has been sanded with the diamond blade. But if you wanted to be extra smooth, you could do some cold working on a flat lap or you could use diamond pads, um, anything you know that uh, is meant for glass for sanding it. But right now this is a very clean edge. That's it for the wine bottle. When I was cutting these, they're fairly thin. The glass that I'm cutting is fairly thin. So I wanted to show you how I cut something super thick like this. And it's very similar, I just go much slower. So here we go. Turn on my water, then my saw. So you can see when you're pushing something through that's very thick like this, you have to use a lot of pressure. I always want to keep my right hand holding the bulk of it, and my left finger is pressing against the blade, against the glass. I never want to put my finger here because this will chip off, or my thumb, because it may chip off, it's the weakest part, and this can stab into your thumb or your finger or cut your finger. So. I always keep my hands to the side of the blade and never push from the back of it. Safety first. So there you go. Okay, and one last thing is to show you how I use the dressing stick. I would just do it while I was cutting. I notice it's getting um, dull a little bit. Then I would run this through once and continue cutting. So I'll show you that. And that's how you use a dressing stick. If you like what you saw here today, hit the like button below. It just lets others know that you like this video. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, click on my name, the name of my channel, and then click on the word videos at the top. It'll show you all my past videos in the order that they were uploaded. But if you'd like to know when videos will be uploaded in the future, hit the subscribe button below. And to be notified the moment they're uploaded, hit the bell button right next to it. And you'll get a notification the moment they're uploaded. So thanks for joining me today. Bye, honey bunnies.